now made it to the Serengeti, which I'm super excited about. This is a location that I've wanted to visit for so, so long. It's just a place that conjures up such distinctive African images in your mind. So I'm very excited to get out there and start shooting it. From a landscape photography perspective, it's probably quite limiting. Um, the only real safe places to go out and shoot will be from camp or from the Jeep, which is gonna be quite constraining. Um, but yeah, I certainly can't go wandering off through the bush unless I've got some sort of suicide wish. So I'm not expecting too many great things from a landscape shooting perspective, but from a wildlife photography perspective, amazing, absolutely unparalleled in many ways. Only problem there is I'm a lousy wildlife photographer, so I'm certainly not expecting any fantastic images, but it's gonna be an interesting learning process. We're literally just about to set off on our first game drive of our visit here. Um, so we've got three days here in total. Um, it's been one day in the north, two days in central Serengeti. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what we see. So uh, I can't wait. Well, what a first morning that's been. Um, we've actually just stopped for a little bit of lunch in the middle of the park, in the middle of nowhere. And just look at this absolutely incredible there's no fences here so um yeah if i get ambushed by a lion at any moment uh should make for a memorable vlog entry but um yeah as for this morning it's been a really great start we um we spent the morning driving alongside the mara river and we saw um hippos and crocodiles but they were outside my focal range so i didn't get any effective shots of those but we did get one extra special moment and anyone who's done safari will know that the vast majority of your time is spent driving around in a vehicle without seeing much but every now and then you get blessed with these incredible moments that make it all worthwhile and we got one of those when we came across a leopard that was sunning itself on a rock and it was just incredible we sat with it for a little while and then some wildebeest went past and it instantly grabbed the leopard's attention it started zooming through the grass um, and our incredible guide Francis followed it and then we got to this particular spot where it just struck the most perfect pose up on this rock and I'm absolutely chuffed with the picture I got it was fantastic I couldn't have asked for a better image of a really elusive and shy animal that's difficult to photograph so what a start that has been so I'm very much looking forward to what this afternoon can bring So the afternoon didn't go anywhere near as well as the morning. We broke the rear axle on our Jeep and lost our four wheel drive. And we actually got picked up by a sister Jeep from the same safari company. And it was a very bizarre experience. We literally just drove without stopping. So we passed incredible animals, incredible scenes, and we didn't stop once. And it, I felt, like I couldn't say anything because ultimately the driver was driving for the client. So we could have passed by a juggling rhino and this guy wouldn't have stopped. It was a bit odd. I didn't get any pictures. I didn't get any footage this afternoon. It was just a bit of a write off, but as they say, tomorrow is a new day. So fingers crossed, we get a bit more luck on our side tomorrow and we can see some of the incredible things that Serengeti has got to offer. Um, so now I'm back in my tent and I'm literally surrounded by elephants and hyenas. I'm not even joking there, they're straight out the front of the tent, they're there. So um, yeah, I'm not sure how much sleep I'm gonna get tonight. Pretty much certain that I'm gonna look back at this video and think, why didn't I take the hat off? <laughs> um, it's been an absolutely phenomenal morning. We got up at six um, this morning and set out on the game drive. And probably within about 45 minutes, we'd actually came across a cheetah. Uh, no other cars had found it, just us. And unbelievably, <laughs> it, it pretty much struck a very similar pose up on a rock to the leopard. I shot yesterday which 
I thought it was unbelievable. It was just, no one else was there and it was just perfect. Absolutely, the composition worked so, so well. So I was really, really happy with that. Then within about 20 minutes, we stumbled across two leopards, which is meant to be incredibly unusual. So again, I got the opportunity to, to take various shots of those leopards at various different angles. But I think the standout shot for me is they were snaking their way through the long dry grass and we managed to get ahead of them. And I think I got a really nice tight uh, image of the leopard's head coming through the grass. So I'm really, really chuffed with that. And then if that wasn't enough, we actually came across a pride of lions sat out in the middle of the grass and there was 16 of them, <laughs> which is mind blowing. There was just lion heads all over the place. I didn't even know where to point my camera, frankly, but um, I'm pretty sure I've got a nice shot of the lions um, sat together on a rock um, kind of looking towards the camera. I think there was also a nice shot of a, a solitary lion head just popping out of the, um, the grass. It was quite a minimalistic shot, but I think that worked really, really well. So what a morning it's been. Well, the afternoon is just as amazing as the morning. <laughs> Look just behind me here. We've got something like 23 lions in a pride here, just shading themselves under this tree. It's absolutely incredible. I'll just spin you around as well. We've got some more kind of sitting in the grass down this way as well, just beneath this tree. Absolutely amazing. It's quite difficult to photograph though because there's just so many little faces peering through the, gr the grass that I don't quite know where to point my camera. But I'm not complaining, this is something else. <laughs> Today is just the day that keeps on giving. It's been incredible. We've literally just encountered a mother cheetah and her three baby cubs sheltering from the scorching sun under a little bush. I never in a million years thought I'd get the chance to photograph a scene like that, let alone see it. It was incredible. But then if that wasn't enough, we then encountered yet more lions and uh, we got so unbelievably close to them. One was literally right next to the wheels of the car and I never in my wildest dreams think I'd be able to do this but I could literally click my fingers at the lion to get it to look at the camera for the shot. Quite amazing. Three adult male lions just here. Absolutely amazing. We're literally right next to them. Couldn't ask for a better position to get some shots of these amazing creatures. Today was absolutely incredible, it really, really was. I feel like I'm running out of superlatives for it. It was just mind blowing. We went from big cat encounter to big cat encounter, leopard, cheetah, lion, just constantly all day long and just such incredible close experiences with them as well. It was mind blowing and I taken an absolute ludicrous amount of photos from today so i will um bring you more from serengeti tomorrow and i'll also talk you through my camera equipment and my settings good night
I've now made it to the Crater Highlands in Tanzania. And as you can see behind me, the weather's quite significantly different here. This is a lot like home and not a lot like Africa at the moment. There's actually spits of rain in the air at the moment. But this morning we were in the Serengeti and we did our final game drive and it was superb. Didn't actually take that many photos this morning, but I'm not um, complaining at all. We got to watch a cheetah hunt. We get, got to watch a lion hunt and it was just a fantastic finale. Overall, the Serengeti has been incredible and I'm really, really pleased with the selection of shots that I've got particularly of the big cats. Now, before I leave you, I thought I would take the opportunity to actually run through my gear and the settings I've used during my trip. So let's start with my gear. I've been using the Nikon D850 and I've been using a 70 to 200 mil lens, the F4 from Nikon. Now, that's not renowned as being a great wildlife photography lens. And to be honest, the 200 mil was not enough at all. I did used to own a 600 mil, but to cut a long story short, I don't own it anymore so the 200 was the best that I had but I'm actually pretty happy with what I managed to get from that lens it for certain uh, scenes the animals were way out of distance I just could not shoot them but we got surprisingly close to a lot of animals and really the lens could excel and I used a little bit of a trick just to give me that little extra boost I engaged DX crop on the D850. So that takes its resolution down to about 20 megapixel, I think, which is more than adequate. And essentially that will remove all of the empty pixels that are just capturing nothing. So I get to take more images and fit them on my card, but it also almost gives the illusion of just that extra reach in the images. Now, the number one thing that I've got wrong on previous wildlife photography shoots is I've failed to control my short speed, but I corrected that this time. Um, failing to correct um, to get on top of your short speed leads to blur and a lack of sharpness in your images particularly when the animals move or when you're shooting in at a long uh, focal range it accentuates those movements um, those shakes in your hand so this time I dialed in a minimum short speed of about 500th of a second to 640th of a second and that really corrected it, it I think a lot of my shots look a lot sharper for that if I encountered a scene where the animal was moving particularly a little bit more than average, then I would make that even faster to compensate. Once I'd gotten top of my shot speed, my next priority was the aperture. Now, I probably should have been shooting at F4 for most of my shots. Um, that would have got my ISO down and led to less noise in my images. But to be honest, I wasn't that confident in my shooting and my ability to get the focus point precisely where it needed to be. So I actually shot um, at about f8, which I think gave me a little bit of uh, a comfort zone, a little buffer for focal, focal point error in my shots. And I think it's worked quite nicely in a lot of my shots. Um, I've got nice sharpness through the image and the focus points are in focus where they need to be. I think once I've got a bit more confident with wildlife photography, I'd probably shoot at, um, a wide aperture, but yeah, baby steps for now. And in terms of ISO, I really didn't care at all what the ISO was. Um, I just set it to auto and let the camera choose because I prioritize sharpness and good depth and, uh, and clarity in the focal points over the um, the noise the noise in the image doesn't particularly matter to me so that's about it for this vlog um next time up i'm hopefully going to do a vlog on the ngoro goro crater which is actually just over these bushes there you can't see at the moment um so fingers crossed i'll have a vlog for that very soon um some zebra just there <laughs> just thought i'd point that out um if you've enjoyed this video as always, I appreciate any likes, comments, or subscribes. Um, they're always brilliant to receive. And hopefully I'll see you next time where I'll be down in that crater just down there.